Welcome back to TTC. We've just started our series on cordless angle grinders by building a power dyno for those. And we ordered several of them from what you guys recommended in the comments. But down there in the comments were a lot of requests looking for cheap, like cheap, cheap corded four and a half inch angle grinders. So we decided to buy these models and throw together this first quick and simple dive into these before we jump into those cordless with both feet. Now we don't plan to test these too much going forward because well with cordless no one advertises things like runtime or often even rate their power and that's something we try to do here better than most by showing you that sort of thing. Now corded, well they run for much longer assuming you pay your power bill and have some type of accepted power rating system that's universal. Really what people are paying for on a tool like this that you can use all day long instead of just 10, 15 minutes per battery is durability. How many days is this gonna last? And that's hard to quantify, especially when these universal motor jiggle boxes would rattle our dyno apart in 20 minutes, much less if we try to use it for 20 hours. So what we're gonna do today is take these apart to try and glean some of that quality and durability there. And of course, dyno these grinders really to see if paying a short stack leaves you short on power, or maybe there's a sweet spot for that value. Oh, and this includes both a $15 Harbor Freight Warrior we bought on sale for 12 bucks and my old used Harbor Freight Drill Master I bought for $8 nearly 20 years ago to see how far we've come or maybe what we've lost from the same store over that time. This is the 7 amp $84 Milwaukee 4.5 inch grinder from our first episode on these. It gets hot and it feels like you're shaking hands with an out of balance washing machine. Actually, let us know if you'd like to see vibration included in these rankings for cordless tools in the future. But this will be our first test case, and it makes 5,700 RPM under a 200 watt load. So that's the speed at which it does a task like this. Roughly, it's nothing crazy, just some regular grinding. Now we're gonna move this along. This is the Harbor Freight 4.3 amp Warrior, a $15 angle grinder, and the most entry level grinder they sell. Obviously at that price point, it doesn't even come with a grinding disc. We paid $12 for it with a coupon. This model under the same 200 watt load makes 5,400 RPM. So working a bit slower under normal to light grinding and with plenty of vibration to go along with that, even worse than the Milwaukee. Now this is my OG grinder. It got me through a lot of rough spots and looks well rough for it. It's the Drill Master from Harbor Freight and I paid $8 for it in 2004. I think on coupon as well, but I've always called it my $8 grinder, so that must be what I've paid. Its power switch is a bit cheap feeling and sketchy at times. Its power cord has been accidentally cut twice and repaired super professionally, I think you'd have to agree. And its disc lock has been gone since probably I was single and I have a few young ones running around now, but no worries, this Phillips screwdriver hack has always done the trick for me. Now I love this stupid thing, but is it my go-to these days at home? No, but I'll always use it when the job is about as sketchy as this tool looks, but realistically, it probably sucks by the numbers. Let's take a look. Oh, 7,180 RPM under load. Okay, I take that back. It's the best tool ever made. Less vibration than the later model, Harbor Freight as well. Good stuff. One last model we purchased to go along with the $84, $12, and $8 models is the cheapest corded four and a half inch grinder on Amazon at the time of purchase. And it's strangely from an actual brand that we've heard of, maybe you too, when this seven amp grinder was 22, 23 bucks and even comes with a disc now, so we're moving up in the world. There's not much else to say about these bargain models. It turns on. Let's see what it does in grinding speed under some load. 6,260, not bad. This is just an idea of how much grinding action is happening under some pressure on the tool. But let's turn things up to 11 and see if it can make it there. These tools are taxed until they cut out or RPM falls below 4,000, which is around half of what they're trying to run at, to see how many watts or horsepower they can generate. The corded Milwaukee makes up to 420 watts of output. The Harbor Freight Warrior, it doesn't go much beyond its 200 watt speed test and vibrates its way up to merely 280 watts before stumbling in RPM and cutting out. The vintage collectible Drill Master makes it much further up to 330, 340 watts because it's a seasoned beast and the best thing ever. The Wen, on the other hand, while being a 7 amp model like the Milwaukee, doesn't make Milwaukee power. It makes more, quite a bit more in fact, up to 520 watts 
dunking on the $84 Milwaukee and well, everything else here. So let's open these tools and see where they cut costs. Since this is really the meat and potatoes of Corded Grinder, can you use it for 1,000 hours or just an afternoon? So up first we have the Warrior here next to the Wen. The gear on the Wen is noticeably nicer, like they are both centered parts of course, but the finish and surface DA on the Warrior is rougher. The Wen uses a larger sealed bearing on the front and the Warrior uses a bearing inside, just smaller. And both use needle bearings in the head here to locate that gear assembly. Grease looks fine in both cases. The Milwaukee uses this blue XHP lithium looking grease, plenty of it too, but it doesn't stop it from getting super hot. And its gear also looks at least as quality as the Wen, decent stuff here. But curiously, a brass bushing inside instead of a needle bearing like the others use could explain some of those harsh vibrations we feel. The old Drill Master's gear is a bit better than the Warrior maybe at best, maybe it's just polished from use, and way too much room in this head for grease, which has all but been expelled now. Hey, and that's, that's this is the spindle lock button. After all these years, it's still dangling around in the head here. And this model even uses a needle bearing, the Milwaukee being the odd one out here. When it comes to the armatures, you can see why the Wen makes the most power and why the Warrior makes the least. It's all in the size of things here. The Warrior has some epoxy on the windings, but little and not in some places as well. The Drill Master just sort of globbed it all over, with both the Milwaukee and Wen looking very tidy here. The Milwaukee's windings are all well epoxied solid, and the Wen has even additional white stringers, which some people feel adds additional strength, but more than anything else, I think it adds a surface shape that brushes away metal dust better than a smooth one, which in a tool like this with that much air intake, these get caked up and filled with grinding dust eventually. The switches are all pretty comparable, but the last difference I saw was the Wen uses a sealed bearing at the base of the armature. The Harbor Freight models used a metal shielded bearing, and the Milwaukee uses a tiny, very small metal shielded bearing here with a rubber boot over it. But between these grinders, three cheap, one sort of not cheap, it's the Drill Master in front with material removal speed under some light grinding, and the Wen for sheer power, and for build quality, the Wen again by a smidge over the Milwaukee. Of course, that's an opinion. What's not an opinion today is my old Drill Master here, it's definitely the winner. <laughs> of course, that's biased talking. It's not in your head though, these things really were better back in the day, and not as good today, at least from what we can measure. Sorry folks, not for sale, I know what I got. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, realistically, the overall winner here is the $23 Wen. It beats the $84 Milwaukee. I'd rather have it over that tool every day of the week, We'll leave a link below. Thanks for watching.